Hello, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Hello. Uh, hey. Until uh, four or five after, until we actually get started. Hello, Morgan. Hello. We're just waiting another two minutes before we get started for other people to join. Morgan, can you have the calendar invite? Because the calendar invite has a Google meeting. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the that's the lead that Morgan because it was confusing actually. I didn't know which. Oh, one I see. Yeah, I'll just delete it. That's easy now. Uh -huh, awesome. Done and done. And let me make sure that's fixed for next month as well. Next month. Yeah, next month is already fine. Okay. All right, two more minutes before we kick this off. Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Morgan McQueen, uh, product manager at Google. Uh, this is the monthly Open Telemetry community meeting uh, where we go over the status of all of these special interest groups in Open Telemetry and discuss recent items of note and news. Um, the document, uh, our notes document, uh, well, first off, these meetings are recorded uh, and the recordings will be posted online. Secondly, the notes document is shared in the community calendar link. Uh, and that's where we host the agenda and take notes on everything that was discussed during the meeting. Uh, I think Ted and I have already filled in uh, some of the items in the notes for today's agenda, but if you can add things to the conversation, please just open the document, edit it, and uh, add things, and we'll uh, start covering them. So the first item for today is uh, Gitter. Uh, as you noticed, the main Gitter chat room for the Open Slumber community disappeared this morning. Uh, we quickly recreated it. Uh, I reached out to Gitter. Um, they're going to try and re-add all the members who, who uh, weren't re-added to the new group, and they're going to see if they can capture the old chat history. Uh, it appears that someone accidentally deleted the chat room. Uh, Gitter has a, a very interesting security model where literally anyone in the chat room can just delete the entire chat room, uh, which is definitely not the best. Uh, they've had a feature request that they said they will improve on. Uh, uh, they have a feature request to, to fix this to create an actual admin role, but it's been open for three years. Um, 
So it's not nearly as important as gifts. Tell them gift support is <laughs> more important. Yeah, adding gift support should be higher on the priority queue. <laughs> um, anyways, they're going to try and restore things. Uh, lesson learned don't press the delete button, <laughs> uh, no matter who you are. Um, yeah, that's the update on Gitter. Uh, next, I think, Ted, you had a, a topic on approver and true roles. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is um, uh, instigated for me around yeah. trying to get more like a triage role uh, put in and uh, got into a conversation with Sergey, and it kind of came back around to the current approver role as well. So I kind of wanted to talk about both. Um, just a thing we're noticing is we have people who, including myself, um, and also I know, you know, you, Morgan, Jigar, other people, uh, Midori, who's not on this call, who are sort of like, uh, more like project managers, and we're often uh, kind of around uh, helping uh, our engineers on the project. And there's just some like annoying administrava around being able to set labels and things like that, that you actually need a tiny amount of uh, GitHub access in order to do. Um, it seemed kind of annoying to have to go around to every single repo after it gets created and get this access added. Um, so I was requesting that we do this as just like an org wide setting of being able to have some gardeners or whatever, whatever demonetizing role we want to use to imply this person is not like in charge of the backlog, uh, but nevertheless to have this access. Um, Sergey's suggestion was that we actually lower the requirements to being an approver. Uh, and I felt like that might maybe be, except for like, you know, repo explosion, if that happens, uh, having a lower requirement for approvers might also be fine. If we want to just say approvers are anyone that maintainers are fine with. Um, there's already seems to be some language in there about saying approvers can be project managers or triagers. But uh, the requirements right now are, are that you actually have to do a whole bunch of code commits, like like the literal letter of the law uh, lists how many like reviews and code commits and other things you have to do to become an approver. And I was also hearing from some people maybe like that was just too onerous. We're seeing people get rejected for approver status who are code committers, and it's just kind of slowing things down. So, with that background, what do people think about uh, this issue? By the way, how do you see somebody coming and uh, triaging issues if they don't know about the work? So now it's kind of <clears throat> following what Sergey suggested. I think you have to have a bit of context of what's happening in that repo in yeah. order for you to be able to to triage the issues in that repo, correct? I I think I think that's fair. If one approach is like going to like say Python and be like, hey, everyone, we've got two engineers on Python. We'd also like our engineering manager to have approver access so they can just help manage the backlog. And if people are like, yeah, sure. Uh, I think that's like a, an easy way to do the approval. Um, I'm just noting that right now, our only option is approver and approver right now just says you, mm -hmm. you have to actually be a code contributor. Um, in think, terms of the requirements. I think I think it would be good for people to say other opinions. Yeah. And I think the governance should meet and uh, and decide on this. Uh, but I, I think good uh, I mean filing with more input and why it's important, I think it's good to start. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious actually just maybe backing away from just triagers like uh, people who are working on the various SIGs, do people feel like getting approvers has been difficult or do you feel like you've had to sort of bend the rules in order to get people uh, to become approvers in any way? Or is that like mostly been, been okay for people to kind of make, uh, actually hit the requirements? It's been fine for us. It's been fine. Okay. Yeah, I just want to know that uh, becoming an approver should be very well balanced between uh, being easy so people will feel welcome and uh, easy to get. At the same time, it should be like structured uh, structure such a way that uh, there is no 
uh, I don't like you kind of a reason not to get an approval, approver into the repository. At the same time, you shouldn't be able to bring like a whole bunch of your friends just to like pass it around and uh, like then it will become unmanageable. So there is like lots of um, requirements to balance and uh, we've been looking at uh, how Kubernetes is doing it uh, when we build a membership document. So, I mean, I think this um, request for triage role is very interesting and we, we need to do something with that and uh, make sure it doesn't, like it, it balance all these uh, requirements uh, very well. Yeah. Um, in the PR thread, you mentioned maybe relaxing the approver requirements or making it more oriented towards like the SIG maintainers having just like maybe a more direct say. I think that would be fine. I do agree with you though, the more you go that direction, the less, uh, the easier it becomes to be some form of like favoritism or something. Though honestly, I feel like the best solution for that is all of us just trying to be good citizens. I don't know how much you can like legislate people into being good citizens. Um, but if if we do relax the approver role to the point that we could have project managers taking on that role, assuming you know they can convince the SIG they're trustworthy, I think that would solve my problem. Um, but the other act, option to consider is like the level of access we're talking about is fairly small. Um, assuming we've got people who are involved with the project in a long-term sense, so they're generally considered trustworthy. You know, could there be, could that be like an alternate way to implement this? But I would only suggest that if we decide we want to keep some like coding and committer requirements on the approver role, which I don't think is necessarily the wrong way to go. It just wouldn't solve my actual problem of getting like my engineering managers access to be able to do things on behalf of their engineers. To reiterate a point I made in that thread on <clears throat> issue thread, uh, there's a significant investment from various corporate interests in this project and just bowing to the realities of how engineering management works at most places. It feels like having some sort of easy on ramp for the managers of the engineers whose time is predominantly dedicated to this project would be useful. Yeah. I understand that we don't want to take power away from maintainers, um, but I also feel like there are cross-cutting concerns that having some dedicated gardening staff, so to speak, that can go around and is empowered to create milestones and you know, help out um, would be useful. I think it's something we could at least try. And if it doesn't work out, hey, we stop doing it. You know, like We can change things and then we can change them back. I, I tend to agree. Like certainly in our case, I, I don't know if Jigger's on the call. He's, he's our uh, uh, TPM. Um, I think that would be like a status that would work really well for him. And I'm sure the equivalent's at, at Lightstep and Microsoft and other firms. And it, it's an important role, frankly, like project management. But, but uh, between between the TPMs, who decides what? But at the end of the day, it's the governance board. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, that comes down to rock paper scissors. That's the universal way of solving yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah, it's it's um, listen. Like the, everybody who's contributing here wants to actually contribute, uh, and I think they have a valuable role to play. I think I think there are interesting points into uh, management and uh, and uh, and how how management are are in open source. I would also want to talk to Sarah. Sarah has a lot of experience into this uh, because. I, I don't know exactly. Uh, usually open source communities are driven by engineers. There are not too many managers implied in this. And I think this is an interesting request to have engineers implied into, into, into the, the, the open telemetry project, which I don't think is bad uh, or anything, but I'm just saying I would like to, to hear other opinions. Of how do we handle this? Because definitely in a corporation management, manager has, in the end has the full power for, for a lot of things, which is not necessarily the case in, in the case of an open source project. So I think I, think I would like to understand better how, how we can structure this, but I, I do understand the need of management to be implied into this, so. But it sounds like, I, I agree. So Sarah would, is like probably one of the world's experts on this. Um, 
and we are lucky to have her on the governance board. So Bogdan, do you want to take this up with, that, with her, either in a separate meeting with maybe like Ted and other interested parties? Yeah, we will talk. Uh, uh, we will talk in to, with her and Sergey. Probably should be there. With Ted, we should we should uh, probably talk a bit about this in a separate. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a good next step. Great. Okay. I agree. There's a bunch of ways to solve this. Uh, just uh, it'd be great to get it unblocked. So thank you. Yep. Perfect. Um, Ted, will you take action on that? You'll set up the the sync. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. Um, next, governance elections. Uh, I added this to the uh, agenda while we were talking about the last thing. Uh, and Sergey, since you wrote the blog posts about it, um, I figured you could help me out and talk to everybody about it. But the, the elections are on for the Open Telemetry Governance Board. I think there's four additional seats being added. Um, the cutoff for candidates to apply was today. There were several emails and blog posts and, and messages about this, uh, mostly by Sergey. Uh, and uh, everybody who has a sufficient number of git commits, there's an official number somewhere, I simply don't know it off the top of my head, um, is automatically enrolled as, as a voter. There's also a form you can use to register if you feel like you've made contributions that aren't captured through git commits, uh, for example. I, I think I technically had enough, but I, I filled out the form preemptively and should have other people in the same spot. Yes, yeah, there is a list in um, um, GitHub post, and uh, this list contains all people who will uh, we get there with the commits and uh, emails associated with these commits. Some people have contributed a lot and we have them on the list, but we don't have any commits from them. So uh, there is a separate list of like, I think four people uh, in this category. Uh, Over the top of my head is Tigran in this, uh, no, not Tigran, Thomas, I think. No, there is no top of my head. <laughs> it's gone. Um, um, are we going to regenerate the list? Uh, when, uh, when? No, I think. I think we, we generated it when we announced the uh, election. So I think at this point, if you're not on this list, just uh, register yourself. Okay. Um, there is a form to register and it's like three questions. So even if you did more commits since that, let's, let's say in the last four, couple of weeks, you should uh, register via the forum and say why you should be a voter. Yeah, I mean, if you already did a lot of commits, just uh, uh, your GitHub account will be sufficient enough. Okay. Um, yeah, we will be voting on uh, October. Um, and I need to be, bring up dates, but uh, there is a vote and it will be hold over three days. So people in all time zones will have a chance to uh, hear about that and uh, vote. We also will accept uh, late registrations for voters. If you only found out at these three days that you eligible to vote and you really want to cast your uh, vote, you can still uh, do that, but please don't, um, Postpone. Like if you want to register, register now because it will get easier on us uh, to send you invite to uh, for the voting. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm very excited. We have so many good nomina uh, nominations and uh, um, whole idea of this uh, governance that we elected in the beginning is that we will put staff with uh, five members and then we want to have continuation. So these five members will stay for a while uh, while new members will come and then they will replace uh, original members eventually, like 2021, I think, uh, when all the original members are gone and like only new people uh, stay there. Um, so just to clarify, if you were not eligible uh, due to the number of commits you had on the date that the elections were announced, but since then you made more commits and now you're eligible, you are supposed to register using the form, right? Yeah, the only emails we have is uh, what we posted in Git, uh, GitHub post. I can dig it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tigran, maybe you did enough. I, I, I'm. No, 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 I, I'm I, there. I'm on the list. <laughs> I'm not working okay. for myself. <laughs> Tigran, okay. Tigran, by the way, double check if any of you are in the list of, we do not have your email list, yeah. the section at the yeah. bottom. Yeah. And yeah. If you are in yeah. that list, make sure you also register via the forum and say, I am that person. So that way, because the vote, uh, the vote link will be sent via email in the email that we have. And by the way, for, for Tigran, for you, we have your old emails, but that should be fine. Or the emails that you had at the moment when we query in GitHub. Uh, so make sure you have access to those. Yep. Um, 
I think. By the way, Sergey, are we going to plan to announce the the uh, uh, people who applied on a page or something in advance? Yeah, uh, we planning to do it in two days, I believe. Again, I, I really need to pull up uh, the document and uh, operate with dates. It's real uh, schedule. Okay. So all the nominations got accepted, and now we have. Uh, uh, yeah, October 14th, list of nominations, nom nominees will be published. So we, yeah. we took a couple of days for ourselves just to uh, clear out the list and understand, like, uh, put it like in nicely format and ask additional questions if needed. And then we will post it uh, October 14th, it's Monday, I believe. Okay. Any other yeah. questions or, or comments about the election process? Oh, one, one comment I want to make about the election process. If you know somebody who applied, just tell them that we will, unless they tell us not to right now, we will publish their bio. I think Tigran asked us about this uh, uh, separately and we responded to him, but anyone who applied, if they put something in their bio that they don't want to be shared, please make sure an update yeah. because otherwise we'll publish that on our list of, uh, of candidates. Yeah, I believe we will contact everybody with confirmation. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next topic, uh, I had added this as well. Um, just an update on KubeCon and the Observability Summit. Uh, we talked about this last month, so there's not a lot of updates uh, today. I know of at least two talks that have been accepted for OpenTelemetry, possibly more. Uh, and we've also been granted some time during the keynote, though I don't know if we've actually planned what we're going to do with it quite yet. Um, Ted, did you want to speak a little bit about the observability summit that you're hosting the day before KubeCon? Uh, yeah, just uh, just a shout out since this is an audience that uh, I'm sure is interested in it. If you are going to KubeCon uh, on day zero, uh, just before the day before the start of KubeCon, we're going to have an observability conference. Uh, some really cool talks. It's just a, a single track for a single day, um, and I think it's 250 bucks. Uh, on top of your KubeCon registration. So uh, if you're already going to be down there, you should come hang out with us. Awesome. Yeah. If you have a platinum credit card and want to buy a KubeCon registration just to come to Observability Summit, that's also great. <laughs> uh, Austin, I see a topic uh, underneath. Uh, yes. Recording spot, which I think based off some notes or PRs or comments this morning, doesn't seem like it's possible. Yeah, it looks like it might be dead unless someone knows some magic invocations to get the CNCF to... Basically, it doesn't appear that any of the CNCF Zoom accounts have API access. So no webhooks, no OAuth bots, no nothing. It yells about account admin access. So I'm mostly putting this on here as a generic plea if anyone knows people at CNCF that can alleviate this because it seems bonkers to me that that would be the case because I believe Kubernetes uses um, CNCF zooms and I can't imagine that they handle archiving manually. Um, What's I'm going? actually, oh, sorry, I was going to say I'm KubeCon co-chair, so I'm working closely with Dan and Chris. So if you want, we can talk offline and I can at least get us more direct access to CNCF. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll okay, take light step. I can just uh -huh. create a, I, I can create a support ticket. Typically, they ask to just go through Atlassian support ticket. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we did put in thing. one, apparently, through, um, who is it you told me to talk to, Sergey? Uh, me. Yeah, uh, me? I put in one through her, and she, they, they came, apparently came back and said, hey, no, this, this isn't a thing we can do, but I feel like we're not asking the right question or something, so. What's, what's the problem? The problem is, is that the Zoom accounts um, don't have the level of access they need to um, use the developer API. So I can't create a webhook for, you know, a, a meeting being over. I can't create like a um, integration on the account for that <clears throat> using OAuth or anything. It just seems like that permission isn't available to these hotel Zoom accounts. 
with okay. the intended goal of posting the videos to like yeah. YouTube, right? Like that's yes. Uh, the the eventual goal is to automate the process. I think Sergey has been doing it right now of taking these recordings and posting them to YouTube. Yeah. So we have all the pieces except for the most yeah. important one, which is talking to Zoom programmatically. So, so Constance, I think you mentioned you knew some people at the CNCF you could reach out to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can talk to Chris or Dan because they're definitely wanting to get more involved in hotel. And so, um, yeah. Great. Uh, like I said, you can yeah. email me Austin at Lightstep and yep. Brad. Thank you, everybody. No problem. Okay. Um, and so, mean, wait a second. So meanwhile, if anybody wants to take this uh, job to get missing recordings from Zoom and post it on YouTube, you're welcome to ask and uh, you'll get the keys. Are we doing it just for the monthly community meeting or for every SIG meeting? 15 meetings a week. <laughs> Around 15 meetings. <laughs> Not everyone volunteer at once. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the keys to this right now, and so I will see what I can do about helping. The alternative is we just have the host of each meeting be responsible for it. Like, I'm happy to do it for the community meetings, um, but, fif you know, 15 a month probably shouldn't be assigned to any one person. But Every yeah. 15 a week. 15 a week, sorry. Um, do we want to shift to a policy where the the one person from each meeting is responsible for it? It's just too many people to share account with. Okay. Um, Especially okay. given how finicky the settings are for the auto record and everything. Okay. Sounds like uh, Constance, uh, you're our only hope. That's a lot of pressure. Uh, Zoom is already finicky <laughs> enough as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what they can. Can I write user docs <laughs> instead? <laughs> There's no yes, way. Yes, actually. Come to the website, Sig, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, actually, that's that should be a note too. Um, website is. Sig starts meeting tomorrow. Yep, I don't it's know. If... Through down in the Sig update section. Oh sure. great. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, Sergey, I can help share the load with you if you would like. Okay. Um, Jigger, progress on metrics API PRs. Yeah, so I just wanted to open this topic real quick. Um, it's been about a month and a half or at least a little over a month since we met in San Francisco to discuss the metrics API. We had our working sessions and I think the PRs are still open. And the way um, I, so during my interactions with the SIG leads, I find that, you know, there's still some metrics work that they're, they're blocked on. And I just wanted to ask, do we need another session that will help accelerate sort of whatever's blocking the work on the PR or it's going at a good cadence and there's valid reasons why, you know, it's, it's still open since it seemed like we had ironed out what we needed to do for the metrics work. Hopefully Bogdan can speak and, and if Josh is there or Ted or whoever, but I'm just trying to if, if ask A, is there a problem? B, if there is, do we need to do something about it rather than this? Always a problem. Okay, it's always okay. so what's the problem? Tell me. <laughs> uh, no, so I met, I met with Josh a uh, couple of times this week. I thought he discussed a lot of things. Uh, we are just ready to merge the first like 70%, 60% of the PR. Uh, it's approved and it's gonna get merged. And there, uh, we, so what we decided to, in order to make progress, everything that we agreed on is gonna be merged uh, probably today. I just left two mi uh, minor comments on that thing. And then the rest of the work is gonna be a bit rewritten and we're gonna try to make progress. The, the advantage will be that now it's becoming way smaller and way easier to review and stuff. So yeah, we're, I think, I think uh, it was a combination of things. Like next, last week I was in New York, I didn't have time to look at this. But I think I'm doing a good job with Josh right now, uh, and he's he's very responsive. And everything. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that things are back on track. There were some valid reasons why it might have been a little bit uh, delayed, but we don't need to meet again or anything like that. Not yet, not yet. I will let you know if that's the case. Okay, and the second piece was on a sort of similar note. Uh, how are we doing on the spec version for, I think, Alpha 2? 
We're going to talk about that in the SIG updates. Okay, perfect. Okay. And speaking of which, it's time for SIG updates. Uh, starting with the open telemetry collector, which I think Tigran you usually speak to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a couple updates. So first of all, it's now called collector, no longer a service. We renamed that. The name was causing okay. confusion. Uh, after discussing with the community, we decided to rename it to collector. That is cheering. Yes, the GitHub repository and all Go package names are also renamed. Okay. Uh, from open telemetry dash service to open telemetry dash collector. So if you're importing this, you will need to update your import paths. Uh, number two, we released uh, Collector Alpha 0 0.2 last week, um, which means that the configuration file format is now considered stable. We At least we aim not to make breaking changes to the format, but it's still alpha, but we aim for that. Uh, the next release, 0 0.3, will aim to have, have uh, stable public interfaces for packages that are intended for consumption. Uh, this is important for people who create custom builds of uh, the collector. And, uh, and also we decided to align the collector releases with spec releases, number-wise. Uh, so the um, Alpha 0 0.3 will be released in, in November. Uh, and uh, if SpecSig finalizes the open telemetry protocol early, that release will also include the uh, open telemetry collector, sorry, protocol implementation in the collector. But you, uh, need, you do need parts of the protocol because the data model that you use internally uh, are exposed via the interfaces. So you, there, is a, there is a blocking thing that you have there. That's correct. So, you know, we are working on that and we are making progress, but that's something that may block you. Yeah, so it's preferable that we actually uh, release the, or, or approve the protocol early, as early as we can for 0 0.3 spec. You know that it's on you. You have the last comment. I, I'm ready. Whenever people are ready for the final round of discussion, we can start that. Okay. We should uh, then, yeah, let's, let's make sure we start very soon. Take it okay. as a item to start it. Okay. Soon. Okay. Uh, okay. Sounds good. That's it from me. Okay, next is specs. Which is usually Bogdan. Awesome. <laughs> um, because I was uh, out last week. So I think there, we missed the deadline. We still have a couple of uh, issues open. I think Sergey has better, uh, better knowledge. Yeah. What's, what's up, Sergey there? Yeah, I can talk about uh, specifications. As Bogdan said, we had a milestone set for ourselves as um, last Friday. And today is uh, already Tuesday, no, Wednesday. And we're still not there. So we have 19 open issues. Out of this 19, I believe uh, about five is about metrics. So once metrics PR will be merged, we may get rid of five uh, issues altogether. But it still will leave us with uh, 15. Um, or like 14. And we have uh, a lot of active PRs, um, I think ar around eight right now. A uh, few of them fixing the issues, few of them just uh, fixing issues of next milestone. So it's not like this 10 PRs will cover 10 issues. So we're still looking for owners for these issues and uh, people who will be uh, working on uh, specification. So I feel that there is like uh, uh, lots of people got uh, sick and uh, was out for uh, some other business. So I hope that the situation will get better when we enter like this week and maybe next week. So if you have energy to uh, help with specifications, please uh, uh, help us there. As uh, Jigger said, uh, specifications sometimes block other like block implementations because uh, people were expecting to uh, see what needs to be implemented and how like how to handle questionable situations. Okay. Yeah. And just a, a simple point of process, in case people don't know, uh, Sergey's been doing a great job of organizing everything by milestones. So in both the specs repo and the OTEPS repo, you can search by milestone and select point two, uh, and you'll see the open issues that are like specifically related to this release. I think those are the ones that need attention. I think the other thing that we should probably force us, uh, we should have a 
deadline, maybe Friday. And everything that doesn't get to V2, we do a V2 release and then we move everything over to V3. I, I'm suggesting that in order to make progress because otherwise yeah. we do want to have some, some releases. What do you think, Sergey? everyone? Yeah. I'm fine with being aggressive. We just uh, need to, like, even more aggressive, some issues need to be closed and uh, we can get back to discussions after 1.0. Mm -hmm. If this is uh, about new feature, especially, we can uh, handle it this way as well. Yeah. So, but I'm all for being aggressive at this stage. We're very close to new year. I, I would suggest uh, um, it, it's really the metrics that are the, the thing we'd like to see in point two, because that's the one part of the API, it seems like SIGs are reluctant to put effort into like everything else people already have something so as soon as metrics gets done i would recommend releasing point two and everything else can be point three yep thank you all right next is java huh oh. yes uh sir we are also behind uh and mostly because of me again um so uh for the moment we, we, we do miss a lot of V02 issues. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are people on vacation, there are a lot of people on vacation on Java, but uh, hopefully we can deliver it with the one week. So uh, officially we should have done it on 14, but probably we should aim on 21 for the first release. Okay. Go. And that's usually Rahul. Is Rahul on the call? Uh, for Go, uh, trace part is done for V2 release. Metrics is still work, being worked on. There are a few changes that are, um, as Bogdan mentioned, uh, he and, and Josh talked about it, and the, those changes are going to happen. So, uh, again, 14th is probably not going to be possible for metrics work. Uh, probably 21 for Go as well. Yeah, I do know that uh, Josh and Kresmir have uh, kind of metrics um, implementation waiting in the wings, but they're waiting for the spec stuff to get finalized. So hopefully it won't be too long of a gap. Yeah, so some work has already been done, but though I think um, that work will change a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not everything is uh, going to be thrown away, but uh, so the API is done, that will change slightly. And I think Josh is working on SDK right now. Yeah, uh, that's correct. And uh, I'm uh, looking into the Prometheus exporter and the metrics data model. Okay. Uh, do we have Mayor to speak to Node? Or yeah. Okay, Mayor, sir. Okay. So uh, we released a point one o uh, version uh, with the APIs and uh, node and web SDK. Uh, this also includes uh, two exporters for the tracing, Zipkin and Eager, and okay. uh, HTTP and gRPC instrumentations. Nice. Uh, so currently we are working on the metrics SDK and the Prometheus exporter. Do you have a date for uh, 0 0.2? Probably two weeks from now. Okay. Okay, Python, I think that's usually Chris. Yep, so we're largely in the same place as JavaScript. Uh, we did the 0.1.0 release last week. Um, and then we've got a bunch of work that we're doing now for the 0.2 alpha release. Uh, we, we do have a problem, like all the SIGs have this problem now, that we have milestones in the spec repo that say, you know, for example, metrics exporters will be ready for the, like, the 0.2 alpha. Yeah, uh, but none of this is written yet. So when we say Josh is working on the SDK, the SDK means a lot of things, right? It's not just the implementation of the API, it's also all of the stuff that we buried in the SDK, which includes the data model and yep. exports and aggregation. Yep. And I think all of that is gonna be more work than people uh, imagine right now. Like, I don't think it's realistic that this stuff is gonna get done in the next two weeks, even if it's all we were working on. And I, I don't think another meeting is going to help that. I just think it's, you know, we, we 
haven't scoped this stuff well. We just, we say SDK work, but SDK work actually means three different big projects. Chris on the aggregation. Uh, the aggregation is not defined and I don't think that's going to be there uh, even for Go. So when I say the metrics will be there probably for the basic count of engages that will be exported without aggregation spec being defined. That's, that's going to be in V3. So V2 includes only the basic types. But I thought the spec on the uh, repo says aggregation is part of V2 unless I missed it. You mean the milestones? Yeah. yeah. I, I think we're going to need to start distinguishing between spec milestones and uh, implementation milestones. Because right now, you know, we've got a date for one. But if the spec, you know, let's say, just barely hits their milestone target date, and they, they have one day to spare, that means we have one day to implement everything. So I don't, you know, it's obviously yeah. realistic. I think as far as, like, messaging around the project goes um it's realistic for us to announce project-wide stuff around like the spec releases but as far as like implementations go i feel like that's going to be all over the map right like when go get something out the door versus python versus ruby versus php which just started last week like it probably won't be realistic to have some big official this is the release of everything and all the languages kind of approach. I'm, I'm interested to know what people think about versioning metrics and tracing separately mm. because you know if you imagine that we're going to have logging in the future too we're going to be in this weird state with logging where let's say that we're at 1.0 then if we're trying to keep all of the packages in sync the first logging release will be a 1.0 release but my main issue with that because uh, we've thought about that before. I'm sure other people have opinions, but the thing I've noticed is right now, those different observability APIs tend to have some amount of shared surface area. So there's some concepts that are shared across them. And particularly we want to be like correlating these various kinds of observations. And so that's made me feel like it would be like a step too far to at this point be like they're all treating them like they're separate independent verticals is like not necessarily. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's like a, a, especially a good reason for not having them in separate, you know, say repos or, or packages or what have you. Um, but I think we're going to the problem soon that we are ready to release tracing 1.0 and not metrics 1.0. And then we're going to be holding up tracing on metrics. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we should, we should discuss about it. If that's okay. I think, I think we're a bit far from 1.0 that, I still, I still think we have features to, to solve for 1.0. Mm. Specs would define for 1.0, even for traces. Okay. So once we'll get closer and this will become a problem, we can discuss this. Yeah. I think uh, more directly than 1.0, there's just, I think what Chris is saying is we could start getting user feedback on tracing at this time, right? Like people could be taking Python and exercising the tracing portion of it and writing like instrumentation and we could be getting perhaps some valuable feedback yeah. on that front. Uh, we probably don't want to gate. We want to be able to make some amount of noise uh, to encourage that kind of interest and uh, not wait too long if like the metric stuff is going to be like another month for Python yeah. to get out. No, no, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Next is Sorry, Chris. I said that was, that was the Python sig progress. We still have other sigs to go, right? Yep. So we still have .NET, uh, Ludmilla. I don't know if I saw her on the list of attendees. Sergey's laptop crashed. And he, <laughs> he wanted to mention that it was a Mac, not a Windows. <laughs> <laughs> I think we also lost Austin, who, is, who was uh, part of that sig. No, I'm here. Are you yeah. here? He's just oh, yeah, Austin, you have an update then? Uh, I think we're much in the same place as other SIGs. Um, we do have work going in. Uh, some stuff around benchmarking came in this week, which is good. Um, more integration with uh, the .NET ecosystem. Um, tracing has been in a good place for a while, so that's that's already out. But we're kind of in the same boat with everyone else on metrics. Okay. 
So it looks sounds like uh, we should be unblocked again once the next metrics PR, the one that contains I think sixty percent of the work, is done. That no, that will not accurate. unblock. That will not unblock. The major decisions are will be in the next one. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm aiming for end of this week. Promise. I'm okay. Gonna go, I'm gonna go and spend time. I'm gonna go to Lystep office and stay there until Josh is writing the the specs. It's very nice. You'll love it. <laughs> Isn't it just down the street from you, Bog? Uh I think it's two blocks, two, three blocks, correct? I don't know exactly what it is, but it's it's a, it's in downtown here. I don't know. We await we await the results. All right, Ruby. Is there anyone from Ruby on the call? Don't actually think so. All right, I will plus in the right people from Ruby. Uh, Erlang, I don't think I saw Tristan. Uh, anyone from the new PHP SIG? Uh, I, was, I was on the PHP SIG call this morning, so I said we can, we can talk about it. Basically, they're just getting started. Um, they have one PR that uh, copies a bunch of the tracing implementation from yep. somebody's private repo. Um, it looks good. They are probably going to be blocking on coders. So if anybody's interested in PHP and wants to go contribute to that, I think they're, they're looking for people. Perfect. PHP. I don't think we have a Rust SIG, do we? Well, I saw it on the, the list from last week. Uh, Rust had just said she was meeting some, uh, Isabel had just said she was meeting some developers, so I'll get rid of it. Um, C++. This SIG was I was I was there. Uh, this it was just the beginning, the introduction meeting uh, this Monday. I think there were some decisions about some languages and stuff. I think uh, probably we should start uh, having some uh, kind of uh, hello world there soon. Okay. We are at that moment, though. <laughs> okay, and finally we have the website. Uh, Austin, did you want to speak to that? Yeah, um, there'll be the first SIG meeting tomorrow. So if you're interested in working on the website or involved with website stuff, please show up. Um, one thing I did notice is we need to get the meeting notes on the calendar invite. Um, but yeah, and Constance, I think you mentioned documentation and the website is desperately looking for quick start guides. <laughs> I will probably do that in another round right now. I'm already bombarded. As Tegan's probably laughing right now, as you can tell, I'm already bombarded with writing documentation for Collector. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, I, but I'll get to other stuff in other points. A special shout out to the Collector documentation. It's very good. Thank stuff, you. stuff in the repo already. I... By the way, uh, Morgan, you may want to talk to Joe. Uh, he, he mentioned that he has a uh, tech writer that... Yes. Started the conversation. So bring him maybe tomorrow to the meeting. Uh, there is some stuff that is in progress. Uh, Josh wrote a quick start guide for Go that I'll be trying to repurpose into um, that. There's some C sharp quick start guides already. So I've just been uh, traveling and doing a lot of other writing and stuff this week and haven't had a chance to get to it, but. Hoping by the end of the month, we've got all that fleshed out in terms of quick starts for tracing at least. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I had added notes at the bottom just for the conversation uh, that we had with Chris about doing uh, version metrics and tracing separately. Uh, are there any other topics that people want to discuss this week? Uh, one general thing on the uh, like for the election, there says it's going to be a governance meeting tomorrow, but I don't see anywhere that it's mentioned or like put in a calendar or something like that. Uh, it should be. Let me because I, I have the shared calendar open right now. Oh, maybe mine might not have resynced since we got all our things clobbered, but uh, yeah, because it's on the it's the monthly uh, open telemetry governance community meeting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It's been on the shared calendar for a while. You do you want to okay. still let me know if you see it? Yeah, no, it's, I think it's my calendar because like our calendar is in weird limbo because of the change. And, 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 uh, uh, I think I think is doing the time as the gold seek. So correct. Some of them may want to change. 
all my meetings are clobbering my other meetings. This is so sad. <laughs> do you see it now, Constance? Yes, I do. I forced a resync and now it's happy. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. That, happen that happens when you use Exchange. Uh, not my choice. <laughs> Don't worry, Sergey's not in the call anymore. I don't think. I think we can. <laughs> oh, it's. A, I used to be. I was a former Microsofty. I'm okay with. I will own my shade thrown at Microsoft. Um. Any other topics? Okay. I think that's it. Um. I'll publish these notes up on the blog. Uh, probably sometime tomorrow, and I'll work with Sergey to get the recording uploaded to our YouTube channel. Thank but you. Uh, thank you very much for attending, and we'll see you next month. Ciao, everyone. Ciao.